on Thursday, December 9th, 2021, to hold a regular meeting at 7.30 for the purpose of discussing any and all business, including both in-person participation and remote participation in accordance with Chapter 40A of the Massachusetts General Laws and pursuant to the Act extending certain COVID-19 measures with provisions relating to open meeting law. This meeting of the City Council will be conducted via in-person participation as well as by remote participation. Real-time public comment during public hearings can be addressed to the PBD City Council using the Zoom meeting platform for remote access. Users may view the meeting and make a comment or question to the Chair via the audio option. This meeting is being televised by PBD Access Television on Comcast Channel 9, as well as streaming on PAT's Facebook and YouTube platforms. This meeting is being recorded by our City Council stenographer. All councilors are in attendance this evening. Let us all please rise for a moment of silence. Would you now please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you, Councilor Gould. You've heard the motion. All in favor? Any opposed? It's a vote. We'll now move to the hearing part of the agenda. Hearing 4A is a petition from PMLP to lo locate a new poll on Warren Street. The clerk will please read the notice. Notice is hereby given that the City Council of the City of Peabody will conduct a public hearing on Thursday evening, December 9th, 2021, at 7.30 p.m. in the Frank L. Wigan Auditorium, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, Mass., and remotely via Zoom on the petition 21-190 submitted by the Peabody Municipal Light Plant, 201 Warren Street Extension, Peabody, Mass., requesting to locate a new pole approximately 42 feet from existing pole number 2, Dearborn Road, towards the intersection of Hotel Avenue. For remote participation using the Zoom platform, please visit www.pbd-ma.gov under City Calendar on the homepage or contact the City Clerk's Office. Zoom information will not be available until the Friday before the meeting. PBD City Council, Councilor Mark J. O'Neill, City Council President. Thank you. Uh, would you please uh, state your name and address for the, uh, for the, um, do the application and just give a brief, brief overview of it. Thank you. Uh, my name is Paul Lazaro, um, 201 Warren Street Extended. Um, so I'm here, like they said, to uh, for petition 21-290 to locate a new pole at the corner of Hotel Ave and Dearborn Road. Uh, to become the new service pole for the new uh, apartment complex that will be going up down. Um, we have taken all the proper steps. We've talked to all of the uh, neighboring businesses and the ward counselor. There has been no opposition to uh, this pole being uh, installed. And I'm here to answer any questions you guys might have about it. Great, thank you. Uh, are there any members of the general public who'd like to speak in favor of this application? If so, please come to the podium now. Are there any members of the general public who'd like to speak in favor of this application? I'll now ask on the Zoom, is there any? Uh, Allison, has, uh, the clerk has told me that there's no one on Zoom at this point in time with their hands raised. Uh, I'll now ask, are there any members of the general public who'd like to speak in opposition to this application? Please step to the podium. Once again, are there any members of the general public who'd like to speak in opposition of this application at this time? Seeing no one in public or in person as well as on Zoom, uh, I'll now ask Councilor Saslaw to speak. Thank you, Council President. Uh, as was just stated, uh, I did speak to the representative from the PMLP. I have no objections. I have not received any calls from any constituents or businesses have any objections. So. I put on supporting the new poll location. Thank you. Thank you, Councilors Laszlo. Are there any other members of the committee of the council who would like to ask a question or have any comments at this time? Seeing no one, Council Saslaw. Yes, motion to close the public hearing. Councilors, you've heard the motion from Council Saslaw. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Council Saslaw. Yes. Uh, motion on a petition 21-190 submitted by the Peabody Municipal Light Plant. 201 Warren Street Extension, Peabody, Mass., requesting to locate a new pole approximately 42 feet from existing pole number two, Dearborn Road, towards the intersection of Hotel Avenue. So moved. Councilors, you've heard the motion from Councilor Saslaw. On the motion, is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Councilors Gould, Manning Martin, Saslaw. Yes. Welton. Yes. 
Sharif. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Matsoulis. Yes. Turco. Yes. Rosignol. Yes. Melville. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. Motion carries 11 to 0. Stand becoming Mr. Lazaro. Next item on the agenda is hearing 4B, which is a special permit from Massport, Massachusetts Port Authority. The clerk will please read the notice. Notices. Notice is hereby given that the City Council of the City of Peabody, acting as the Special Permit Granting Authority, will conduct a public hearing on Thursday evening, December 9th, 2021, at 7.30 p.m. in the Frank L. Wiggin Auditorium, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, Mass., and remotely via Zoom on the application from Massport, Massachusetts, Port Authority, care of 246 Andover Street, Peabody, Mass., for a special permit requesting the parking of undamaged and operable vehicles in connection with Peabody Logan Express, to be operated by Massport at 210 Andover Street to be located in the large parking lot adjacent to East Boston Savings Bank, vicinity of Prospect Street, PBD Mass is filed in accordance with sections 1.5, 6.1, and 15.7 of the PBD Zoning Ordinance. For remote participation using the Zoom platform, please visit www.pbd-ma.gov under City Calendar on the home page or contact the City Clerk's Office. Zoom information will not be available until the Friday before the meeting. PBD City Council, Councilor Mark J. O'Neill, City Council President. Thank you, Councilor Turco. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, due to the fact that I'm a, uh, an employee of the Port Authority, I need to recuse myself, and I will recuse myself and step out of the uh, auditorium. If my co-counsels could keep an eye on my daughter while I'm out there, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Council Turco. We'll wait for you to leave the auditorium. Would the applicant or the representative please come to the podium and state their full name and address for the record and please give us an overview of requests for the special permit. Thank you, Mr. President, uh, counselors. My name is David Ankles. I practice law at 246 Andover Street, Unit 101, Peabody, Massachusetts. And I live here in Peabody off Prospect Street at 7 Wheatland Street and I represent the applicant, Massachusetts Port Authority, along with the landowner <coughs> mall at North Shore LLC. Before I move on, I'd like to thank the uh, city clerk, Allison, and uh, the young man named Peter, who supplied me with this aid that enables me to overcome the disability that I have uh, relative to hearing up until this point in time. I didn't know it existed, and uh, I can't thank you enough, Phyllis, and uh, yeah, I really do appreciate your effort. Thank you. This is an application for a special permit pursuant to section 15.7 of our zoning ordinance, and it involves a request to park undamaged and operable vehicles in connection with the operation of the PVD Logan Express by the Massachusetts Port Authority. Massport would like to locate its Logan Express park and ride service <coughs> to Logan Airport at the North Shore Mall in an effort to better serve the citizens of PVD and its surrounding communities with convenient and safe access and egress to and from Logan Airport. As you may know, the previous location on Route 1 has been closed. The mall location is intended to replace it. The building commissioner is of the opinion that this use requires a special permit due to the fact that it involves the overnight parking of a number of vehicles as set out in section 4.2, the schedule of use regulations in our zoning ordinance. <clears throat> this location, to expand upon that, Massport intends to locate in the large parking lot next to Rockland Trust that's the former East Boston Savings Bank, uh, and it's where the Apple Circus was located. The lot has 302 parking spaces, of which 282 will be available for riders. Six spaces will be lost to circulation, and 14 spaces will be occupied by two temporary trailers. One trailer will be for an office and staff. The other will be a three-station portable restroom. Both are described and pictured with the layout provided with and attached to the application that was submitted to the city clerk's office on November 4th. 
both are ADA compliant. Logan Express is staffed 24 seven. Buses run each hour at 15 past the hour from 3.15 a.m. to 1.15 a.m. There is one bus each hour, one bus each hour. From PVD to Logan, the first trip starts at 3.15 a.m. The last trip is at 1.15 a.m. the next day, Monday through Sunday. From Logan to PVD, it begins at Terminal A at Logan. First trip is at 4.15 a.m. The last trip is 1.15 a.m. the next day, Monday through Sunday. Security and lighting are provided around the clock, 24-7. If necessary, the area will be fenced. The salt storage area currently on site is to be removed. All access and egress will be from 128. Again, all access and egress to the location will be from Route 128 as shown on the access plan attached to the application. There will be no buses traversing Route 114 no buses on Lowell Street, no buses on Prospect Street, no buses on Cross Street. All access and egress will be as shown on the plan, which is attached to the application. They come off Route 128 going north, go under the overpass, come through the shopping center, across in front of Nordstrom's, by Barnes & Noble, directly to the parking lot. When they leave, they reverse the route, go back across the parking lot in front of Nordstrom's, take a left, go up by the Cheesecake and get on the on-ramp onto 128. Again, no buses on Lowell Street, no buses on Prospect Street, no buses on Cross Street, all on Route 128. I want to emphasize also that it is one bus an hour. Those buses have a schedule. They come in, <coughs> people get off, people get on. It's usually a seven to 10 minute turnaround at the most. There is no idling and there is no <coughs> usually no more than one bus there at a time. The request, and I want to emphasize this, is for a one-year temporary permit for a term ending after the Christmas and New Year holidays in 2022-23. It is possible that Massport and the mall may be able to return to the council to request a permanent special permit, which may be of a very similar nature. This will be determined over the coming year and is dependent upon many different variables. The economy, world health, travel restrictions, the evolution of the mall in America, and many other considerations beyond our control. In conclusion, I believe that this request is in harmony with the general purposes and intent of this ordinance as set forth in section 1.2 that the business regional district is the proper location for this use, that it facilitates the adequate provision of transportation for everyone, including the elderly and the disabled, and that it may help to lessen congestion in the streets. It is environmentally sound and is far more economical than driving to and parking at Logan. It provides services to our residents in relationship to Logan Airport that are both convenient and in many instance, instances necessary. I hope you agree. I'm here with representatives of the shopping center, Mark Whiting, and we have two representatives from Massport here to answer any of your questions. Thank you, and again, Allison, thank you very much. 
Thank you, Mr. Angeles. At this time, I'd like to ask if there are any members of the general public who would like to speak in favor of this application. Please come to the podium. Good to see you again, Representative Walsh. Thank you, Mr. President. It's, uh, for the record, my name is Thomas Walsh. I am the state representative from the 12th Essex District, and I reside at 170 Linfield Street here in Peabody. Um, Mr. President and the members of the council, this is um, the Logan Express bus that was for many years up on Route 1, and they no longer are operating from that area, and are hoping to locate at the North Shore Mall. Um, their thinking is that the ridership would increase, that it would provide a better product uh, to and from the airport. And I'd just like to remind everybody here that it is not just people who are traveling from, from, from Peabody. It's really a, a regional um, uh, operation. But also, it is workers from the area who work at the airport who um, really don't have much uh, option for parking at Logan Airport. And they hop the bus here on the North Shore and, and travel in. So um, over the course of uh, the pandemic, all the Logan Express locations had closed. Um, most are operating now, Framingham is up, Woburn is up, and uh, we have been, as a delegation, not just Peabody, Danvers, Salem, uh, but our senators and representatives really from Cape Ann uh, to Revere have all been advocating for the reinstatement of this service, and uh, we're hoping that with, with your assistance that the Logan Express could operate for uh, at least the next year. The request is for a year to make sure that it works, that, that it works out for um, for assignment properties, that it works out for Massport and its riders, and also for uh, residents of Peabody. So uh, with that, I would appreciate your consideration and uh, hope that it passes. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Representative Walsh. Are there any other members of the general public who would like to speak in favor of this at this time? Welcome, Mayor Bettengord. Good evening. Thank you, Council President. Good evening, Councilors. Hope you all are doing well. Uh, I just wanted to speak in favor of this proposal, a couple reasons. Uh, one is uh, an effort to support our North Shore Mall. Uh, Mark Whiting, the North Shore Mall has been a terrific partner for the City of Peabody and I want to try to support uh, their efforts uh, as best we can and I wanted to speak in favor of it for that reason. But also because I do think that this is an outstanding service for our city and our residents. Uh, we do get calls on this and people have been asking uh, when the Logan Express is going to be back and operational. And uh, I think it will be an excellent service for our community, PBD residents, and from the North Shore. Two things were extremely important to me during this process. One was that there were going to be no buses on Prospect Street, on Lowell Street. Uh, that would have been a great concern to me if there were buses going down those roads. The fact that all the buses are going to be coming in from the highway um, you know, really, made, really pleased me and, and I think made this a much better proposal. And second, that there is a sunset on this. We're going to review it for a year, see how it goes. If it's not something that works for all parties, uh, then we can look in a different direction. But I think this is an important um, service to continue to provide for our residents, and, uh, and I'm in full support of it. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you for comments, Mayor Betancourt. Once again, are there any other members of the general public who would like to speak in favor of this applicant? Please come to the podium. And we don't see anyone raising their hands on Zoom. So at this time, I'll ask, are there any members of the general public who would like to speak in opposition of this application? Please come to the podium at this time. Welcome. If you could just state your name and address for the record, please. Alice Goldstein and um, my husband and I, Ernest and Alice Goldstein, are here tonight, and um, we live at Two Toma Drive in Peabody, um, which is right on, we live in the corner of Toma Drive and um, Prospect Street. Um, and I'll tell you, um, several times, a dozen of times or more, we've used um, the Logan Express to go to Boston, and we welcome it, and it's, it's a great idea. However, I do have the concerns tonight. It's been all about traffic. I do have concerns about the traffic, not the bus, because the route is what I would expect and want the um, Logan Express to take in and out of the mall. Although 128 is um, very hard to get when he's, when he's coming back and taking that big loop around where the old Holiday Inn used to be, 
getting on 128, the driver is going to hit traffic. There's a lot of congestion there all the time. Um, and sometimes 128 is backed up all the way from Centennial Drive into Beverly. It's just that whole narrowing of 128. So that's a consideration for traffic. But um, they have now 282 spaces for people who are going to be using it. I have never, when we take the Logan Express, um, there may be five or six people on it that are traveling, and sometimes I would say it's more for the mass food employees, which I think is a great thing, again, for them to offer their employees. Um, but I worry about the local people, the people coming through our streets, not the buses, but the local um, um, people who will be using the bus to get to Logan. They're going to be driving in 114 on, on Prospect Street, on Lowell Street, to get into the mall. They're not going to be taking 128. These are the people that are going to be riding the bus. Um, and also, uh, questions, um, is it going to be a diesel bus? And if so, it, it's going to be idling for that seven to ten minutes for sure at, while they're loading, um, unloading and, and loading new passengers. So that's a concern. Um, the other thing is there's going to be, of course, a truck coming in, I don't know how often, to empty the toilets that are going to be in the trailer. So that's a consideration. Uh, and I don't think, maybe one question too is why did they move from the location on one on um, Route 1 that I think Massport owns that property. So if they own the property, why are they moving? Why not keep that property and keep that service running there? Um, so maybe they can answer those questions. And again, it's only a year, so um, I hope that if it is passed, that after a year we're going to watch what happens, how many people are really using it, and how it's affected the traffic in the local road surrounding. Thank you. Thank you for coming in for your comments. And I made uh, notes. We'll, we'll get answers in tonight's hearing regarding uh, the previous property on Route 1 and also the, the vehicle types for the bus, whether it be diesel, electric, or something else. Um, are there any are there any of the members of the general public who would like to speak in opposition at this time? Please come to the podium. We don't see one on Zoom right now with their hands raised. Um, uh, so uh, at this time, I guess I'd turn to Councilor Trest uh, to um, move the proceedings. Thank you, Council President. And before I do that, I would like to uh, move to accept late communication five and late communication six and to be read. Councilors, you've heard the motion. All in favor, any opposed? It's a vote. And Councilor Shress, would you like to read these? I, I think one of the uh, applicants, uh, one of the authors asked for me to read it, so I would like to uh, make sure. Uh, <clears throat> late communication. Excuse five. me, Councilor Shress, could you just speak closer to the microphone? Sure. It's a little yep. higher. And I ask all councilors to move the microphones a little closer so we can make sure yeah. everyone um, in the, 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 the I'm hall, sorry, but also usually, online. Yeah, usually I speak loud enough, but I know I was away from it. Uh, my name is Salone. I'm going to kill the last name, and I apologize, Latanen. I live at 6 Emory Street, Peabody, Mass. I've lived at an address since 1977. I'm opposing to the special permit request by Massport. My request is in opposition to the special permit request to be read into public record by Ed Charis. I walk my neighborhood increasingly, and I, fear, I am fearful that I am, will be hurt given the large increase of traffic on Prospect Street as it becomes very dangerous to go out on a walk. The Massport Special Permit would only make it bad situation worse. More, <clears throat> more traffic on a burdened street, either safe or, or sound for the city planning. I only recently learned of this request and I am alarmed about the lack of transparency surrounding what I have major impact on my home and immediate community. I am opposed to this special permit request and ask that my city councilor stands with me opposing this project. Thank you. Uh, a communication six, Janice and Joseph McDonald. My name is Janice and McDonald. My husband and I have lived at Emory Street, Peabody, Mass. I have lived at this address since 1976, July of 1976. We are opposed to the special permit request by Massport. 
We request that this letter be read in public and recorded by our counselor, Ed Charest. With writing of the opposition and a special permit being requested by Massport, Massport is requesting parking of vehicles in connection with the Peabody Logan Express. Parking is proposed to be in a parking lot adjacent to the Rockland Trust, previous no known as East Boston Savings Bank. The lot abuts Prospect Street. As you may know, Prospect Street is narrow street and has a huge amount of traffic volume. We are concerned about the safety and residents given the inadequate sidewalks and narrow roads in general. Increase of volume and traffic generates from this proposal. Bus terminal commuter parking will only make Prospect Street considerably less safe. The entrance of the proposed facility is very busy. <clears throat> it is used by the mall entrance, Shaw's entrance, Leahy Clinic entrance, sports medicine entrance, post office, and numerous other retails and numerous medical and medical office facilities, law office, etc. In, in addition, and, and as you may already know, there has been numerous new resident, residential developments already being built on Prospect Street, and now more traffic volume will be on Prospect Street with Stan. In addition, we are concerned with the expanded hours of operation in the facility as well. We only have recently learned that the meeting was being held on December 9th and was unable to attend in person. We received no communication about this meeting and this was very concerning. Transparency is very important. Unfortunately, there was none in this case. We are wondering why neighbor meet, a neighborhood meeting was not scheduled to discuss this project and an impact on a neighborhood. My husband and I was wondering why the existing Massport owned, Massport owned land on Route 1 in Peabody is not being used for this purpose. It is an excellent access in large streets, no walking neighborhoods, and, will be and is not close to any neighborhoods. In conclusion, we are opposed. Thank you, Janice and Joseph McDonald. 8 Emory Street, Peabody, Mass. Thank you, Councilor Torres. Just a point of information for any of the folks watching or those folks in the, in the, um, the hall tonight. Uh, the, um, the McDonough's live outside 300 feet of the property, so they were not direct about us, so that's why they were not given a direct notification. I just wanted to make sure that that was understood by people watching or listening. Councilor Torres. Thank you, Council President. Um, again, uh, uh, these two letters and other Alice who spoke was who talked about um, the lack of information and I want to be clear to uh, my constituents is that I, I just recently received the information that I know firsthand um, this past Friday and Saturday uh, so any information I want to assure my constituents that if I had I would certainly put uh, made them well aware I certainly would like to have a neighborhood meeting Prior to this, as uh, Janice has pointed out, just directly across the street is a new development that is being um, proposed. I, I, I think it may be in the last uh, position of the planning committee uh, where Janice and Salone lives on pro off of Prospect on Emory. There was a special uh, permit through the ZBA of another complex of, uh, I believe, one is 62, one is like 42 units, but a good impact on, on that streets. And they had talked about the concern of additional traffic coming up Prospect Street, um, where it is one way there. And people who do not know the area usually follow um, Google, MapQuest, uh, so, you know, whatever those apps are to make you drive without looking at a map. Uh, they may in unsurrounding, unfamiliar surroundings. So it's not so much I'm opposed to the whole, the whole concept of a bus terminal in the mall. And as Mark Whiting, I think, can testify, is that I've worked very closely with him and certainly always been supportive of, of um, uh, projects that was going to be in the mall area. And not that I'm not supportive of this, I am very concerned, uh, again, because I, I've got information so late that I wasn't able to study. The, many of the questions that was asked, I'm going to have some similar questions. And again, one is, um, you know, if Massport owns the property on Route 1, 
right? And they uh, has have abandoned that use of that and now looking to add it at a location in, in Peabody. May I ask the why that that property would be abandoned? Because it, it will tie into other questions I have. Hello, Councillor. Uh, thank you for your questions, and you know we appreciate the invitation from the City Council. Um, it's quite simply accessibility. Excuse, sir, excuse oh, me for yes. interrupting. Could you please state your name? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I'm Chris and Grillo uh, with Massport. Uh, I manage the transportation, uh, aviation transportation services, which include the Logan Express service. And um, the reason why we're not going back to the current Peabody site is a lack of accessibility. Uh, first and foremost, for for buses themselves or, or vehicles trying to enter the site, as you well know, um, unless you're coming southbound on Route 1, you're unable to access the site directly. Uh, if you're coming off of Route 95 uh, in either direction or, or coming you know, north on Route 1, um, it, it's a challenge, and it's been a challenge for us for a number of years. Um, second, we believe the, um, there's a larger population, uh, you know, there's a larger population to draw, for, draw ridership from um, along Route 128 as opposed to uh, that particular location on Route 1 or Route 95. So while it would be you know, easier for us in some ways to go back to the site that we own, um, we thought the right thing to do was to try to make the investment and to try you know, in the North Shore to do this right and you know, offer you know, a better service to, to more people. Uh, did sure, that answer your it, question, Councillor? It, it did, but it led to another question sure. too. But, and again, I'm, and I apologize. Thank you for coming tonight. Yes. And I appreciate you wanting to stay here in Peabody. I, that foremost, um, you, you say the you know the access to it is difficult because unless you're coming south on um, Route One from right. 95 or Danvers or what have you, mm -hmm. um, but wouldn't that be the same as where the mall is unless you're coming down one 128 either directions? You're going to have to turn around at some point to go. You're going to have to get off one 114 go down to Prospect Street and up, or you're gonna be coming down Lowell Street, uh, yeah, you're gonna be coming down Lowell Street okay. and going up Prospect to it. I don't, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think I am, that any person who's traveling is going to do the same loop that the buses are doing to drive through the mall to get to that side. Mm -hmm. There's no way that's, that's gonna happen. So they're gonna be coming through that street if not Brooksby Farm from 114 up through. So uh, it, I'm sure you did some studies, so maybe you can, you can enlighten me. Um, I, I can speak to the traffic, but first, I'm sorry, David, did you want to? I, 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 think, I think what you're, you're referring to is the traffic pattern in general as people come and go to the mall. Are you not? I, I'm s that would be the same traffic pattern that would be going to the Logan Express. If they're going to the mall, it's... Yes. Um, unless and they're going to yes. the front and, of the mall and, or in the back uh, part of the mall. And I, I guess the only answer I have to that is that uh, I, I can't control what's on the internet. I can't control the navigational systems. No one can. And people who are coming to the mall uh, do what they do. Uh, some use 128, some 114, some use, uh, uh, some may use Lowell Street, some may use uh, Prospect Street, Cross Street, but that's the way it's always been. And I don't think that we can change the general traffic pattern. What I, what I do want to address in addition to that, uh, Councillor, is, is the fact that most of the traffic generated by Logan Express occurs at 3, 4, and 5 a.m. in the morning. As you know, most of the flights uh, that leave Logan uh, are usually set up uh, to leave at 7 and 8, and you have to get there an hour, an hour and a half to two hours before, especially now during the pandemic, so that most of the traffic is going to be generated early in the morning. The number of uh, the number of trips to and from the mall uh, 
Uh, I think you have to look at it on a 24-hour basis and perhaps even a three or four-day basis. Uh, you are not getting, even though you have 282 spaces at the mall available for people using Logan Express, you're not getting 282 people rotating in and out during the course of a day. You have a much, much smaller number of people. People come in and out, it's usually 100 to 125 people, and those are coming in and going out. And that's spread out over the course of two, three, four days. So the volume of traffic is really, when you consider uh, the number of people that come and go to the mall and the reduction in traffic uh, as a result of the pandemic at the mall, I think the, the number of people coming to and from the mall are far less now than they ever have been and they will continue to be much smaller than they have generally been in the years before the pandemic. Um, I hope that helps you out a little bit, Councillor. Mr. Ankles, it, it does. And again, this is why I'm saying I, I'm, I'm not against the project. I just really, and I think my constituents, really need to understand what this project is. And it, that information, not pointing fingers at anyone, was not out there. And that's why I know you're, uh, I'm assuming you're under the gun uh, to try to get this done tonight. Uh, this is the last meeting of the year. And I believe if it does, does not get through, you have to refile and, and, and that process. And nobody, if anyone has watched the way I operate, do want to put people through anything that they unnecessary. So that's the information you're giving me is, is very, very helpful. But I do have um, another question. I, and I'm sorry, sir, I, I, I missed your name, the your first one. Chris? Yes. Chris, thank, thank you again. Yes, Chris, sir. Um, so you're talking to uh, mate Dave Ankles explained some about 120 people, 25 people coming through at the times. The um, your old location, how many, um, what was the ridership per day then there? Yeah, so at the, the prior location, let me see, we, had, we did about 95,000 per year, so that's just under um, a, a few hundred per day. So um, the, the traffic, the average daily traffic would be on, on our peak day at the old Peabody site was about 300. So if you include all the buses, all the employees, all the air passengers coming in and going out, um, it was about you know, 300 cars per day. So David was referencing 125, that would be about 125 air passenger vehicles coming in and, and parking on a daily basis. Um, yeah. If I may, so you said earlier 300 passengers. Uh, Are you yes. So, okay, so at the other location you did 300 passengers a day. Am I correct? In and out. In and out. In and out. Right, yes. Ridership. ridership. No, it's, 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 the ridership was approximately 300 per day, and the number of cars was approximately the same. Sure. If you have 300 people, you've got 300 right. people go. Right. The, um, but you're looking for this location to be increased what you did at at uh, Route 1. Yes, that, that's fair. Um, at the moment, our ridership is a little bit um, lower than it was back in 2019. I'm, I'm quoting a, a peak. Um, obviously, air travel is, is at Logan down about 65, well, about 30 or 35 percent right now. But yes, we are hoping to grow uh, from where we were before. That, that, that is why we're looking to locate here. Um, what I might suggest, if, if you don't mind, is to you know, conceptualize what is 300 vehicles coming in and out really mean at this site. Um, as David mentioned before, the peak will be between 3 and 5 a.m. There's another kind of peak midday when employees change shifts uh, between about you know, 1 to 3 a.m., this would be 1 to 3 p.m. And at most, there are 20 vehicles coming in and out in any given hour. Um, so yes, we would, you know, we would hope to increase ridership, uh, but again, 
probably, e even if we doubled it, you know, that would be, you know, 40 vehicles in and out at 3 a.m. Or, or 4 a.m. I'm not sure it will have, um, I would hope we wouldn't have a significant impact during peak commute hours, which is, you know, um, you know, where we would have less traffic impact. So, I'm not really mm -hmm. following everything yet. 300, just not if I'm correct, uh, about 300 vehicles a day coming in and out. 150 right. in, maybe 150 out. Right. You're parking for 280 some parking spots. Right. Right, so you're looking to increase the 300 number that you're at mm -hmm. pre-COVID at Route 1. Right. You would like to increase that roughly to 400. I was just using that as an example, yeah. but yes, certainly we right. want to grow as much as, as we can. Sure. So, yes. but you only have 200 parking, 300 parking spots, right? 284 parking spots. Sure. So well, this is, I'll, I'll okay. probably let. Yeah, so. Uh, Councilors, uh, councilors, I'll just ask you, please direct your questions through the chair. We have a lot of crosstalk okay. and it's very hard to okay. follow. Thank you. I apologize, through the chair. So, through the chair, you're looking to, I just wanna see what the, what the impact the real reality impact is. And I'm, when you talked about the impact more in, in the morning between three and four, I, I think that might be more concerning for some of the neighbors if sure. that is the largest time people are gonna be coming in three, four o'clock in the morning. I, again, I just wanna make sure I understand. The busiest time is between three, is it three, four, five in the morning. What you have to do and what you're not doing is taking the number of vehicles in and out and spreading them out over a 24 hour period of time. If you take and say that there are going to be 40 vehicles in the morning between three and four, 40 vehicles coming to the North Shore Mall is not a very large amount considering the amount of traffic that pre-pandemic existed. Our hope is that we can during this year, even though we're still in the pandemic, observe the number of trips in, out, over that 24 hour period of time and model or change or adapt, modify to accommodate that. When we first got this uh, request, we tried very hard to do everything we possibly could to alleviate any traffic that would be through a residential neighborhood we eliminated any bus traffic on 114. We eliminated uh, any bus traffic on Lowell Street, a major thoroughfare. Uh, and we have completely eliminated any traffic, any bus traffic on uh, Prospect Street. What we can do over <coughs> the year, hopefully, is observe where there is traffic, if there are any problems, modify our advertising, modify the information that we provide to users as to how to access the site and uh, adapt our use to the site, the neighborhood, and uh, the number of users, hopefully. Thank you. Through the chair, um, again, it's a, this is, Great information. W one thing I, I, I had asked through the chair, uh, thought of, is the, the bridge the, uh, that the buses are going under, it, have you checked the height on that? Because that, that bridge is kind of low. Have, is that, I, is that, that might be a very stupid question, but I gotta, I gotta ask to make sure the clearance on that bridge is uh, high enough for the buses. That was checked, correct? That's a mistake I'd make, but they haven't made it. They have checked, and it does, it does work. Through the, through the chair, because I just hate to go through it all, then come back and say, we can't change the height of the 
bridge, but it can't go underneath there, so I'm, I'm great on that. Um, are the buses diesel? Through the chair, are the buses diesel? And the idling time on the buses at that location, and is that the first and last stop um, location? What I, what I have learned is that the bus that comes in, people get off and people get on within a period of seven to 10 minutes at the very most. You have one bus. It may idle for that seven to 10 minutes, it may shut down, but for no more than that period of time. One vehicle. Is it diesel? Yes, it is. And again, through the chair to, to the applicant, you do know that uh, if, if you live nearby and there's a bus, one bus idling every hour, that can be troublesome for somebody who's trying to sleep if one comes at 11, 12, 1, and maybe the next one would be at 3. I, I'm just concerned of that, of the, the noise a diesel bus will be making to the neighbors. And again, we have apartments right across the street. They may not be here, but they are still our constituents. And I want to make sure that we're not introducing a nuisance that we, um, we could prevent. It, and also through the chair, uh, is there an idling ordinance in the city that you can't have a vehicle standing, uh, standing idling? I know there is, there is an ordinance, but I'm not sure if it applies to this. Does anyone know? I, I wish Captain Richards was here. I'm not aware of any ordinance relative to idling. Um, I'm not the person to answer your question with regard to the noise regarding idling. I, even though I live on Prospect Street and should be concerned, I, I, I don't think that's something that uh, would bother me. But uh, why don't, uh, uh, Mark, I think we have uh, the MBTA buses that come in and out of the shopping center, and I think that uh, those buses are of a similar nature, and I don't know of any complaints that uh, have been made. Uh, are you aware of any complaints, Mark? Uh, and I, first of all, I first of all I want to acknowledge that I agree with you 100 percent. You've been incredibly supportive of the mall. Um, what I will note is, first of all, traffic-wise, early morning. We have, you know, employees that come to the center, you know, almost 24-7 uh, because we have a lot of work that goes on after the mall closes each day as the stores have to restock and, and that includes Shaw's, for instance, which, you know, has deliveries made early morning. Uh, we run our snow operation off that lot usually and uh, as the general manager of the property, as you all know, for uh, almost too long, um, I I'll tell you that, um, you know, we work very hard to make sure that noise, exhaust um, issues are, are dealt with quickly. And I'm not aware of any complaints that have been placed by any resident uh, back towards the mall about any of these types of issues up to this point. We think we found a very first quality partner to work with, and uh, they've been extremely um, uh, responsive in addressing a lot of our concerns. Um, this is a one-year deal, as, I, as was noted by David. So we have plenty of opportunity to step back, take a look and see how this operation functions before we would engage in renewing the deal in the years to come. So that's really, you know, Massport, frankly, approached us over about a, a longer term for a deal. And we thought it was prudent after working with the uh, sil si city building inspector's office to really step back and uh, scale this back to a one-year term, which is what we've done. Through the chair, uh, Mark, I really do appreciate that. And, uh, and I know you're a man of integrity and would only want the best for the neighbors in the, in the mall itself. So I, I, I'm glad you are here for that. But again, as was Mr. Ankley's pointed out, that they can't control the regular day traffic. They can control the buses. They can't control the regular day traffic. That is some concerns of some of the, the, the neighbors. Um, 
it, I was wishing the buses were going to be electric buses so we wouldn't have to will, worry about the noise and stuff. Um, on the application, you did talk about the lighting on the facility. Are you utilizing the same type of lighting there is now, um, or are you going to have to increase it because of uh, uh, safety concerns and things of that? I think, I think we're going to use the same type of lighting, uh, and uh, I think after observing what, what goes on, if it needs to be shaded, uh, we can do that. I don't think that the lighting is going to be increased or intensified. We are going to have security cameras operating, so we do need uh, lighting to uh, enable us to uh, keep the property or keep the place secure. Is there anything uh, that you'd like to add to that? Uh, if I could. Yeah. Um, uh, first off, uh, thank you all for uh, taking time to hear this tonight. My name is Mike Gelmet. I am uh, the program manager for vertical projects for Massport. Uh, the lighting on the site, uh, we intend to keep the lighting as it is. We don't intend to intensify it or anything like that. Uh, we will be adding cameras throughout the lot initially on the trailer when we install it, which by the way, we say a trailer, but it's a very high end. It's not like you see on a construction site. Uh, that's important to us and it's important the relationship with the mall and the city uh, that we have something that uh, appears nice, approachable, uh, something the community would welcome. So uh, to answer your question though, yeah, the lighting wouldn't really change. It's remained the same as it has been. Okay, uh, through the chair, the size of the, I'm just going through my notes, if you, if you don't mind. The size of the buses, typical um, Logan Express buses you have now, they're not a, um, you know, connected bus type of thing, extra long. Like how many, how the capacity on a bus would be through the chair? Yeah, um, they're not articulated buses. They're regular coach buses and uh, 51 seats uh, for the, Peabody buses. And through the chair, as, you, as has been said to me, the, the biggest concern really is the um, their late night, early morning um, hours. And I'm, I'm assuming that that is hours that you can't change because of uh, ridership, am I correct? Correct. Thank you. Again, I, I, I really do appreciate you, through the chair, I really do appreciate you being here and answering my questions. Again, there was just the lateness of it has is, is made a, a lot of people concerned. And, and I think that we other people will be here, but because of the holiday season, it's tough. Um, I probably would not even come close to thinking of supporting it if it wasn't for Mark Whiting and him, uh, the way he conducts himself at that at that location and I certainly uh, hope and I know as long as he's there he's going to be making sure that uh, it is run correctly to the, the special permit and as we mentioned earlier I can't say that for myself so that's why I'm asking an awful lot of questions I want to make sure my constituents know that I'm asking every question I could that they were brought up to me and to make sure that this is out of the realm we this is something we want to be doing on a regular basis so with that being said, uh, Chairman, can, uh, President, could you just have a two minutes so I can talk to the constituents that's here and making sure I, I got all their concerns? That'd be fine. They certainly can come up and, and ask additional questions. The meeting is still public, so I, I, if that's... Sure. So sir, I, if you would I, like I to ask, take, if you'd like a two-minute recess, that might be a good idea anyways, that, given the time. So we'll take a two-minute recess. Thank you.
Okay, we're back after the recess. Council Charest, to be able to chat with the residents and do you have any further questions from them? Thank you uh, to the President Council. Um, I appreciate the two minute recess speaking to the constituents that is here. Um, and again, I know there's many who had concerns who weren't here tonight, uh, one reason or another. As I stated earlier, I would not be in support of this if it wasn't for David Ankeley's and Mark Whiting, um, who was representing uh, them, because uh, I do, um, do appreciate and um, have total respect for those two individuals. So Massport, if you're doing anything more, you want to make sure you keep those guys close by. Um, <clears throat> I would um, move to uh, agree and support the proposal by, supported by uh, Massport with a couple of conditions. Okay, Council Chair, uh, um, just want to make sure other councils have an opportunity to speak and then we probably should move to close the public hearing, but let's, I know Council Melva had his hand up and then Council Gould did, so uh, would you defer for other councils to ask questions and requirements? Okay, Council Melville. Uh, Thank you, Mr. President. I mean, do, do you want to let us know what the conditions you would want to request, Councilor, just so we're all on the same page before we close the public hearing? I think that, Mr. President, if it's up to you, I think that would be helpful, because I, I have some comments, but I think that the, if we're going to have conditions, it might change my comments. Yeah, Council Melville, great, great comment. Uh, Councilor Trust, would you like to list your proposed conditions at this time? Sure. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> condition one, that it the idling, up, since we're unsure of what the idling uh, ordinance is in the city, that it would be adhered to uh, no matter what uh, the time frame is, uh, not be part of the uh, conditions that if the no idling is two minutes, they adhere to two minutes. If it's seven minutes, it's seven minutes, et cetera, et cetera. But they would um, adhere to whatever the ordinance of idling is here in Peabody. So that would be the point of, point of information, Council Charest and others. I believe it's a, in, there's a mass state law regarding idling, so I don't know if we could do anything additional on that. But I just I just wanted to point that out. Uh, through the chair, that's fine with the state idling. I'm not saying uh, if we have one in our books, if none enough seem to know, uh, or by the state idling, either or, which is most most strict. Okay. Sure. Um, Second, that if lighting needs to be changed and increased, that it needs to come in front of the city council for an approval before it happens. Through the chair, do you Council understand? Council are you are you looking for a hearing regarding lighting changes? I, I, I would like would because it would be they stated that the the lighting that is there now will stay and they will not increase the lighting. Uh, that's there, so I don't want to increase lighting and have spillage over into the streets. So this, just so people are informed if they want to change the um, structure of what is there now. Council Tress, I'm just going to make this come, this is just my own thought. Um, we're certainly going through the conditions, but I would ask you to be very precise about what we, what you're proposing for conditions, what is required, and then the next step, because that will, I think, help councilors. Uh, and, and, and the applicants to understand what they may be trying to accept. So I just want to make sure as we go through, we have to be very precise what we're asking and what we're going to, if the lighting changes, we will hold a hearing, whatever it is, please be specific so that we're all on the same sure. page. Thank you. Uh, make, uh, if the lighting changes that is there now, that they need to come in for a hearing on changing of the lighting, amended, Also, the last one is that if the bus route exiting and entering the premise, if that needs to change, they need to come in for an amendment on the special permit on that. Was that precise? Yes, it was. And when they mentioned that, I'm just curious on this one, maybe they can help me out, a, if a fence is needed uh, for the surroundings, I'm not, if, if, was that for safety, security, uh, or was that for lights to go that's not flashing out into the neighbors across the street? I'm, I'm not sure why they mentioned that, but I did want, I was curious on that. 
Is, you, uh, the Mr. Ankeles or someone, would you like to talk about the, the question regarding the, the fencing? Uh, could I address two issues that the council has brought up, Mr. Chair? So would I just, if, if, just for good order, if you could answer the question on the fencing, and then I think once Council of Trust gets through the conditions, we can then kind of uh, yeah. do that. We I just want to try to follow. We don't. Up. We don't need the fencing. Any other conditions that you're proposing at this time, Council of Trust? Not at this point, but if Mr. Ankles has a, he wanted to respond to something else, so I don't know if that's going to trigger something. Okay, so Council Melba, I know you're going to get the floor, but it's okay for Mr. Ankles to answer, uh, I guess, give some additional color on the conditions that proposed at this time. I think Mark, uh, Mark Whiting will tell you that he cannot change the lighting uh, at, at that particular location. The only thing I'd like to point out that for purposes of safety, we may have to light up the buildings that people are coming and going to, and we may have to light the walkways and the entrances uh, so that for safety purposes, uh, we may have additional ground lights. But I think what you're referring to is the overall parking lights. And to the best of my knowledge, uh, Mark, those are not going to change. He cannot change them. And just to allay, you know, your concerns, you know, obviously from a liability standpoint, uh, we would not need to change any of the lighting. It already meets any requirement, either, you know, from a state or a federal or from an, even an insurance perspective. But what I will also tell you is, you know, we would be amenable if there was some kind of screening that needed to be placed on the actual individual poles, we would certainly take into that into account. So, Council Trust, based on some of those responses, is there any changes you'd, be, you'd make to your proposed conditions? Uh, I would be willing to listen. I would like to listen to the fellow councilors if they have other conditions. Okay, so at this time, uh, Council Melville and then Council Gould. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. President. First off, uh, thank you to Massport for staying in Peabody. Thank you to our legislative delegation for allowing you to, to making this happen. Um, I, got a numer I got numerous complaints from uh, friends of mine in West Peabody, so Ward 6, Ward 5, uh, regarding the that this express was actually not operating at that time. So I think it's a big win for Peabody that this is gonna stay in Peabody. Um, you know, this could have gone to Salem and we have a number of conversations about uh, transportation within the city of Peabody. We're talking about a trolley downtown and I think that this just adds another tool in the toolkit for the city and for our residents. Um, I think this is showing that we are continuing to utilize the mall um, you know, I think it's hard to say, you know, you hear a lot of chatter about malls dying and Peabody is investing in our mall. We had our tax classification last night and a big part of it was the, the uh, exponential growth in residential uh, values, but we're not seeing the same thing in our commercial and industrial, so this is a step in the right direction to keep that value. So I think it's a worthy investment and I think it's right on the mark to also providing, because Massport is a government agent, quasi-government agency, and you're trying to serve the people of the Commonwealth. And we want to see the best thing happen for our residents in the city of Peabody. And I, and I do, um, I completely understand some of the comments by neighbors, and I think the compromise is that this is a one-year temporary permit. So if there are issues, the council at that time, a year from now, will be able to address them. And then, by the way, Massport might come back to us and say, this isn't worth worth your time or money. I hope that's not the case. I hope this stays. Um, so I think that this is a common sense approach to transportation on the North Shore. It's a win for the city. It's a win for the mall. Um, I think there are residents that are waiting for this to start back up, so I hope you're very successful. And I think that this is something that we're going to look back on a year from now, and hopefully we, you're coming back to us saying we want to be here permanently. And if there are issues, I feel very confident that you will find ways to alleviate those issues. Um, I, lastly, on the, the amount of vehicles, and, and traffic is an issue throughout the city of Peabody, but I can't tell you how many times 
as an elected official, I hear us celebrating, um, you know, businesses or restaurants that are getting twice as much um, ridership as anything that's going to be going to this space. Uh, you know, five, you, 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 we, we, we root for that. Um, and also, we're replacing where you're storing your salt at this time. <laughs> so we're going to get a better use out of this particular part of the city. So I'm all in favor of this. I think that this is going to be a great win. I appreciate all the questions from the ward counselor and from the residents. And uh, I think the vetting process has laid itself in a position where we can all be very successful. And I hope you are very successful in this. And I, I plan on supporting this enthusiastically. And I just want to thank all the elected officials from the legislative delegation, from the mall, and from Massport. Uh, I think this is an example of good government working with private business. Thank you. Thank you, Council Melville. Council Gould. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'd like to thank Massport for being here. Appreciate your efforts in bringing this to fruition for the mall. Uh, our state delegation, thank you very much. Most importantly, thank you to Mark Whiting. Um, Mark is all about what's best for the mall, obviously, but Mark is also about what's best for Peabody. And I'm confident that Mark uh, feels good about this. Um, we have a relationship that uh, we want to continue to help them all survive. And uh, to me, this is really something about bringing people to the mall to shop, to go to restaurants. They get off a plane, they go to pick their car up, and they decide to have dinner um, at one of the many restaurants. So I think it's really, um, it serves uh, purpose of helping the mall but also helping Peabody. I have a question in regards to the fencing. Um, is the fencing not re sorry, is the fencing not required because uh, there's curbing and landscape in most of the perimeter of that area? Correct. Correct, Councillor, and because we have security cameras 24-7. And so really you look at it, the only entrance and exit is that section where there's no curb cut or landscape for that particular that particular spot. Correct. Okay. Thank you very much. I have no further questions. Thank you. Thank you, Council Gould. Council Walton. Was there a different question? Different answer, rather? Sure. Sorry, um, Mr. President. So just in total transparency, at the entrance that you're talking about to the lot, uh, we probably would have a revenue control arm that would be installed there. Um, it's for security and also just to control who's coming and going from that lot. Other than that, we wouldn't need fencing around the perimeter. That, I think that's a great idea. That's another security feature. So that's great idea, Mark. And Tom, uh, just to be clear, we've already approached Rockland Trust, and we've assured them that they would be able to maintain their egress from my property to theirs uh, through this operation. Thank you, Mr. President. I am fully supportive of this project. Thank you. Thank you, Council Gould, Council Walton, and then Council McGinn. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I think this is a good project. I appreciate uh, Council Chires having so many questions to make sure that um, we can make sure the neighbors are heard and that are accommodated as best as possible. Um, my question through you, uh, Chair, to Mr. Whiting is, could you explain where the current MBTA drop-off is at the North Shore Mall? Uh, Councilor McGinn, they basically come in uh, at 114 and um, or 128. I believe it's now uh, 114. Yep. And um, they come around the building and they drop off in front of the area over by the old Salem Five Savings Bank, uh, which is our least uh, busy entrance at this point. Uh, so over by the old Scasso restaurant. Great, thank you. And I'm not sure what the process might be, but would there be a possibility of having an MBTA drop off at this location to uh, make this further accessible for not only PUD residents who might not have a car, but for our local regional neighbors to be able to access this? Uh, I think it's a great opportunity for folks coming and going to Logan, and I'd love to see it as accessible as possible for all of our residents. I completely agree. Uh, we have a fantastic relationship with the MBTA unless they're taking out my bollards with their buses. But, um, you know, for the most part, we could absolutely approach them. There is that uh, turn that they make, that left-hand turn they make um, across from the back of East Boston Savings Bank, now Rockland Trust, 
that would be about the closest drop-off location, and I think it would be pretty close to where the, um, the uh, bus parking area would be set up. Thank you. If you wouldn't mind looking into that, uh, providing this moves forward tonight, I would appreciate it, and I think a lot of our residents, uh, both within Peabody and within the region, would appreciate that as well. So thank you very much. No further questions, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councilor Welton. Councilor McGinn. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, through you to one of the Massport representatives, is there any plan to uh, include vehicle charging stations in this lot? Uh, for the temporary lot that we're talking about right now, uh, there wouldn't be uh, vehicle charging stations. Uh, Net Zero is uh, a big initiative. Uh, we have a new CEO in the past uh, two years. Uh, that's one of our top initiatives. That's what we're driving forward with. As you all know, uh, we've struggled financially for the first time in many, many years uh, through COVID and the ridership down the airlines. Um, but we are looking at all of these things right now. Uh, I can say on Massport, we have electric charging stations in all of our garages and all of our parking facilities. So the intention would be is if we put in a long-term facility, uh, I would certainly think that would be part of the program. Uh, with this, it's a temporary facility. As you heard, it's a one-year facility. It's a significant investment for us, uh, which comes with risk. Uh, but we want to be good partners with the city. And it gives us all the initiative in the world to come in here and work with the community, uh, work with Simon, and try to do the right things to be a good neighbor. Thank you. Um, Mr. President, through you to the, to the representative from Massport. So at your other uh, longer standing uh, park and ride locations, uh, do, do you have charging stations or? Um, yes, we do at Framingham, which is our most uh, modern uh, facility. Okay, so from what I've heard from both of you, it would be on, it will be on the roadmap should this go beyond a, a one year trial, it sounds like, is that fair to say? I, 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 I think but piecing together both of your answers, it sounds like it would be on the roadmap if this was to be more that go beyond the, the one year trial. It's a permanent facility, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Council McGinn. Council Saslaw. Thank you, Council President. Uh, so, uh, being the Ward Council in Ward 5, who is losing uh, the location, I totally understand. I think, um, quite frankly, it was brought up earlier tonight, you know, when you do come down 95, you can't get 95 south, you can't get over to the, um, to the, um, excuse me, to the lot. And um, as much as uh, I'm sure you folks, where you own the property, would want to stay there, I think for the reasons you've uh, listed tonight, it makes a lot of sense. And once again, as even Council Charest said, uh, with Mr. Whiting and everything he's done, I have no, uh, I have all the confidence in the world. And I think it's a great location. How many times have you, come home from the airport and the first thing you want to do is get something decent to eat and now you're going to be dropped off right there uh, at all those restaurants and uh, and as Council Melville said, you know, taxes are important. We're trying, we have a mall that wants to invest, they're looking to um, pivot and bring in other revenue and I think that's the, the best we could ask for and I'll support it for those reasons and thank you very much. Thank you, Council Sasla. Any other councils at this have questions or comments at this time? I just wanted to give a, a couple points of information that I think might be helpful is that uh, currently Mass General, I'll probably butcher it, but Mass General Law does not uh, allow for idling longer than five minutes. Um, and then I guess the two other things that I noticed in the application, uh, page three, it talks about what kind of outdoor lighting is being proposed and indicated on site plan. They say existed lighting, shaded and screened or redirected as necessary. And lastly, um, I think it should be pointed out that uh, the, Attorney Ankeles, uh, in his statement tonight, uh, specifically said that all access and egress will be from Route 128 as shown on the access plan attached to the application. I just want to think that's important clarifications for as you consider conditions. So uh, without any other, if it, no other councils have any questions, I'll, I'll turn it back over to Council Trust. Thank you, Council President. I'd like to close the public meeting. Um, yep. You've heard the motion. Any, uh, all in favor, any opposed? It's a vote. Public hearing is now closed. Council Charest. Thank you, Council President. I'd like to move to support in favor of the uh, petitioners for the, um, hang on, do I need to read it? 
For Massport, Massachusetts Port Authority, uh, 246 Andover Street, PVD Mass, for a special permit requesting for parking of undamaged, undamaged operative vehicles in connection with the Peabody Logan Express to be operated by Massport at 210 Andover Street to be located in a large parking lot adjacent to East Boston Savings Banks on Prospect Street. Peabody Mass is filed in accordance with section 1.5,6.1 and 15.7 for the Peabody Zoning Ordinance. Um, and with all papers in order, I'd like to uh, add the conditions that you mentioned. Do, I, do you want me to read them again? Please do. Okay. Uh, to, uh, to condition one is to abide by the uh, general law part title 14, Charter 90, Section 16, adhere to the no more than five minute idling time. I know, um, and also to refer to the map of what Mr. Ankley's presented to us for the entrance and exiting of the uh, buses to be adhered to, to that. So move. All right, uh, Clerk Danforth has mentioned the, the, the map that was included is part of the special permit. Please. And then at the time, I, I know that they say they can't change it, but if there's any changing in lighting that they need to come back and amend the special permit. So move. Uh, sorry, we're just clarifying that it would require an amendment to the special permit for any lighting changes. Councilors, you've heard the motion. Is there any discussion at this time? Council President, if I can just make sure I'm clear, I'm talking overhead lighting and not lighting on the, the buildings itself. I understand the, the trailers need to have lights on the doors or the steps. I'm talking overhead lighting shining down. Just to clarify so I have it correctly, but so if there was overhead lighting over the trailers, for security, is that something? I just want to make sure that as we do this condition and councilors are considering this vote, that they understand exactly um, that we, we get it precise. So, overhead lighting in uh, at a certain height. I mean, am I, I'm just trying to make sure I understand, councilors. I'm not. I'm not trying to uh, put handcuffs on them if they needed to put a little hanging light over the trailer. I'm saying the existing pole lights, any lights that need to go on poles. Okay. Understood. Thank you for. I think that's important to clarify, councilors. You've heard the. Uh, the motion by Councilor Charest, is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Councilor Gould. Yes. May Martin. Yes. Fasla. Yes. Welton. Yes. Charis. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Matsoulis. Yes. Rosignol. Yes. Melville. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. Motion carries 10 to 0. Congratulations and welcome back. <laughs> thank you very much again, Allison. Thank you. We'll now move to reports of committees. Uh, I'd like to ask Municipal Safety Committee Chairperson Councilor Saslaw to give his uh, report from this early this evening. Council uh, Chairman Saslaw. Thank you, Council President. Uh, we had a meeting earlier this evening of the Municipal Safety Committee meeting in attendance were the members of the committee, Council Chires, Council Manning Martin, Council Turco, and Council Welton, and uh, the majority of the other councils were in attendance. We had three items on the agenda this evening. The first one uh, was to discuss the conditions, the dangerous conditions on Route 114. Uh, we had the entire North Shore delegation either in attendance or attending by Zoom. We also had officials from uh, the police department, representative of the Mass Department of Transportation, specifically Paul Stedman and a couple of colleagues. And, um, and we had a very good attendance. Uh, we talked, uh, excuse me, we, the three families that unfortunately have had family members killed in the last year and a half shared their stories and their thoughts regarding the uh, dangerous aspect of the road. Um, in addition, the public was given an opportunity and shared their concerns regarding the dangerous conditions in the road. Uh, at that point, we did, we did hear from uh, Mass DOT, Paul Stedman, he explained what has been uh, in the work, so what can be done, uh, and was quite, quite had candor regarding time. 
uh, and things do, will take time, uh, but my colleagues did a great job of really uh, pressing the fact that there's things that could be, what could be done in a short period of time uh, to alleviate the dangerous conditions. And I believe that MassDOT heard it loud and clear. I believe that the delegation uh, led by Tom, Representative Tom Walsh also asked if we could come up with some suggestions uh, in a timely fashion that could change the dangerous conditions on Route 114. Uh, this will be kept in committee and um, I'm, Mass DOT will report back as will the delegation uh, reporting back and keep us in the loop of what is going on. So this will stay uh, on the agenda of Municipal Safety Committee for the next chair. Uh, the second item on the agenda was uh, regarding right turn on reds and uh, how we can look at them as a community regarding what the ordinances are on the books. Uh, it, at one point we're going to make some changes and some ordinances to try and alleviate some of the right turn on reds uh, stop signs, but uh, Director of DPS Bob Labossier informed us that they have a uh, consultant who has software who quite frankly is actually uh, looking at that right, uh, looking at that um, and will be able to report back and, excuse me, let me back up. The consultant is going to make some recommendations, I believe it was on Washington Street, there, that's already happening. Um, and then Councilman Ann Manning Martin also asked about other signs across the city and that's when Mr. Labossier also stated that they actually are undertaking that project right now. It should be done shortly and they will come back uh, with some recommendations and information. Um, I would suggest the public if there are right turn on reds that they still have concerns that they're not necessary to reach out to their public official uh, but we also are going to keep that in committee and Mr. Labossier said he would come back before the council to uh, discuss, um, discuss the recommendations that are made with the consultant. Third item on the agenda was an update regarding signage um, on Gardner Street. Uh, this is something that's been in the works for a couple of years. Council Gould made the motion and in a nutshell, uh, once again, in we don't want to put up signs that we have now come up with a new plan on uh, Central Street. So there was the concern about putting up signs and then taking them down right away. So uh, they've agreed to uh, do both, uh, look at both issues uh, once, not both issues, but look at the signage issue once the uh, Gardner Street, excuse me, once the Wilson Square project is completed. So as I said, the signs don't go up and go down. So in essence, that will be in committee and Captain Richards will report back uh, once that project is done. And uh, that is the report of the committee. Thank you, Chairman Saslaw. Could I ask you to just, we received two items uh, from Mrs. Uh, Della Croce, the selected articles and reports on the unsafe condition and then also the, the photo of the, the um, unfortunate accident of her son. But if you could make a motion to yeah. uh, receive those for this. We would make, like to make a motion to receive the items submitted for tonight's Municipal Safety Committee, including action statistics, photo, and the third one was regarding previous discussions or articles about 114, so move. Thank you, Chairman Sasslau. You've heard the motion. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Uh, I just want to state publicly that was an exceptional uh, committee meeting and I really appreciate you bringing that together, all those parties. Uh, I know others said that, but I wanted to make sure I said that publicly that was an outstanding job, uh, Chairman Sasslau. Thank you. This time we'll now move to motions, orders, and resolutions. Council Gould. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I have no motions. I just want to wish everyone a happy holiday. And Allison, thank you for everything you do for us. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Council Gould. Um, Council Saslaw. Thank you, Council President. So I, I don't have any uh, motions, orders, or resolutions. Uh, where this is my last meeting on the City Council. I would just like to say a few words. Um, first off, I'd like to thank my family, specifically my wife Carol, and my sons Justin and Ryan, and my mom uh, for allowing me to do this. It's been a commitment. Uh, it's been a commitment of love, but it's also been a sacrifice to my family. 
and uh, I'm thanking them. I'd like to thank them for allowing me to do this, and uh, that's that. Um, next, I'd like to thank the city clerk's office for all your support over the years. Your entire staff, Allison, has always done a tremendous job. Your predecessor, predecessor Tim Spanos, when I was a council president, we all know how critical that role is, and I'd like to thank you for always answering the phone and getting back and just helping me navigate whatever we needed to do. Uh, I'd also like to thank the department heads of the city of Peabody who've helped me out over the past eight years. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, you know when you're getting a call from a council, it's not to usually say, um, it is to say thank you sometimes, but usually there's a question, there's a concern, and they are always very respectful and got back. And obviously, uh, I'd like to also cascade that down to the entire uh, employees of the city, both uh, police, firefighters, DPS, and all the employees in City Hall and across the city who've always helped out and want to do the best for the citizens of Peabody. Um, I'd like to thank the residents of Peabody, excuse me, I'd like to thank the residents of Ward 5 for the trust you've put in me in the last eight years. I hope I've honored that trust and done the best I can, and I, I thank you. And also, uh, to the rest of the city, um, I'd like to thank you for your uh, support over the years, and, uh, and sometimes not your support. That's okay. It's made me a better person, a better uh, listener, and, uh, you know, no one likes to lose an election, but when you did, the, the, the thoughts and the texts and the Facebook messages really meant a lot, so I'd like to acknowledge those and say thank you. Um, I'd like to thank the counselors who are my mentors in my early years. I'm not going to list any, but those of you out there, some of you, many of you are not here actually, but thank you for mentoring me uh, to help become a better counselor, which I believe I, I have done. Um, I'd like to thank my current counselors who I serve with today and tonight in the last few years. Um, while we may not always agree, I really do believe that everyone who sits on this council has a deep, deep love and appreciation for the city and we're all very proud and we're just trying to do the best we can with the knowledge that we have and the strength that we have. So I'd like to say thank you to all of my current counselors. And um, you, you know, I'll, I'll leave with this. Um, it was a very, um, it was, it was an intro, you know, it, it was, um, I guess it was apropos that, you know, I had a meeting tonight that was extremely critical and, and, and a very serious issue and, you know, God works in mysterious ways, but I will ask my fellow counselors, I will plead with them when I'm gone, whoever's the next municipal safety committee person to please carry that through. Um, we love our families, we love our friends, and I think we finally put the eyeballs on a, on a, on a situation tonight. We had everybody here in the room and I would ask that you please continue to press that issue. And, uh, and my, my one last pet peeve, and I did bring it up earlier tonight, is I also would say to you, um, to the councils at large especially, please look at the jug handle. It was one, th one thing I, I didn't get to, but I've always said, you know, sometimes it's not about, you know, it's about what's best, not necessarily for the ward, but for the entire city. But when it comes to the jug handle, I think we, we'd be great neighbors to our neighbors from the north. Uh, who come home and sit in that traffic backed up to the Revere Cinemas. And really, most importantly, I gotta be quite frank, it's not even that anymore. It's about going south. Um, and we have a highway that has a jug handle in the middle of it with a red light. And uh, the amount of time that people don't get to spend with their families and the wasted energy and gas, and there's many, many reasons. So I would ask that um, you pursue that. I think it's the best, I think it's the right thing. Um, and I know that uh, I've spoken to, Representative Walsh, and they talked about the rotary at the Revere, and they put some um, troopers out there, to some details to maybe get the traffic to flow. If, if that's what it takes, maybe a, a trial on, um, on that. And, and I know it's not the most popular position because there are gonna be many people on Lake Street who, who, who don't agree with it, but you know, I try and think what's best for the greater good. And I think that's an issue that really um, has its time, and I, and I know that they'll have to do studies and look at the lights on, Lake, on Lowell Street, um, for the turnaround, but I, 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 would, I, would, I would suggest to you that um, have, have the intestinal fortitude to, to push it forward and get some funding for that and look at it, because I said I, I do think it would make the city, both the residents as a whole, uh, it would help out overall, and I think we'd be a good neighbor, and I think it's time to do that. And uh, once again, sincerely, wish everybody a uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, whatever you may celebrate, Happy New Year, and it's been a pleasure and an honor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council Sasslaw. Council Walton. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, this evening, I, first I'd like to accept uh, item 7A. 
So moved. To receive item 7A, communication regarding Boulderwood. Uh, sorry, are we, uh, Councilor Welton, are we going to refer that to legal affairs? Um, is that the? Uh, yes, yes we are. So on the motion, um, you've heard it all in favor, any opposed? It's a vote, Councilor Welton. Thank you, uh, I'd like to receive item 8A and set up a special permit hearing. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed? It's a vote, Councilor Welton. Uh, move to accept item 9B and set up a special permit hearing. As, uh, councilors, uh, you've heard the motion. All in favor? Any opposed? It's a vote. Council Welton. Uh, thank you. Also, uh, move to approve item 9E, Class 3 Motor Vehicle License for Greasy Brothers, all papers being in order. Renewal. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed? It's a vote, Council Welton. Thank you, uh, move to receive item 9H, uh, inholder license for PVD Boston Marriott 8A Centennial Drive, all papers being in order, so moved. Council Welton, you wanna do a favor and just handle the rest of them on, on, on H, if you could, just I think for good order. The rest of them are on in Ward 1, just for the record, but um, I'll take all of 8H uh, including Holiday Inn PBD on 1 Newberry Street, Spring Hill Suites, Boston PBD on 43 Newberry Street. Uh, all renewals for 2022, all papers being in order, so moved. And thank you for adding the subject to order, all papers being in order, that's important. Uh, Council's all, all in favor, any opposed? It's a vote, Council Welton. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I would like to make a request to the Forestry Department to look at the tree health of trees overhanging Linfield Street from First Ave heading southerly toward the YMCA Plaza. Uh, some of the trees appear to be in need of either trimming or removal, so moved. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed? It's a vote, Council Welton. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to request PMLP to investigate the feasibility of adding additional lighting to Rainbow Circle, so moved. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed? It's a vote, Council Welton. Uh, thank you, I spoke to uh, Mr. Labossier, but I'll make this in a form of a motion as well. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to replace the missing N on Centennial Park signage uh, on First Ave, so moved. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed? It's a vote, Council Welton. Thank you, uh, I'd like to move to receive items late edition one, two, and three which is communication from Councilor Turco and, and uh, Building Inspector Al Tallarico, so moved. These are, you said late one, two, and three, that's regarding um, the Amazon property facility. That is correct. Uh, okay, on the motion, all in favor, Councilor Turco. Thank you, Councilor Walton. Uh, my intent was to refer those to um, both the planning board, uh, those email correspondences, one, two, and three, to the planning board, as well as the ZBA, um, and also to let the ZB know, ZBA know um, I believe our intent would be a co-motion with Council Welton to appeal the uh, building commissioner's decision um, uh, per the zoning. Council Turgo, just because uh, get make sure to collect the info and I heard it, so the, uh, move to receive late co-motion with Council Welton, co late communication one, two, and three, and have them refer to the planning board in ZBA, did I have, did I miss it? Correct, the planning board who is currently uh, hearing the issue in the ZBA um, in reference to uh, the appeal which will take place and if you could let them know the intent of um, at least these two councilors is to appeal that decision. Thank you, on the motion, all in favor, any opposed? It's a vote, Council Welton. Thank you, Mr. President, and just um, as a point of information um, on that motion, I uh, have received a number of calls and emails regarding uh, questions about why the Amazon uh, or potential Amazon project um, has not come before city council. And just to clarify, it was determined um, through zoning or through a decision regarding zoning that um, the facility would be determined to be a warehouse and not a trucking uh, or freighting facility. Um, so that is why uh, you'll see the correspondence from Councilor Turco and, and Building Inspector Tallarico. So just to give some 
background as to what that discussion was. Um, and moving forward, I think, uh, not for tonight, but for the next council, I think I would like to see uh, maybe a working group look at some of these zoning definitions that seem to be pretty ambiguous, um, which lead to this type of discussion where we're in disagreement in terms of usage and, and uh, what zoning currently allows for. So uh, that's something, again, not gonna move forward tonight, but in the next council, I'd like to see that addressed. Um, finally, I, I'd just like to thank uh, our three outgoing counselors, uh, Councilor Saslaw, Councilor Charest, and, and Councilor Matsoulis. Uh, personally, I would like to, as the newest one on the council, I'd like to thank each of you. Uh, you each spent a tremendous amount of time with me, uh, helping to me, helping me get comfortable in my role as a counselor, and uh, ha had always been there for me for anything that I needed. So, I wish you all the best of luck, and uh, I just want to say it has been a pleasure serving with all of you. So, thank you very much. No further motions. Thank you, Council Welton, Council Trust. Thank you, Council President. Um, just like to move to accept item seven, excuse me, seven B. So we'll move. On the motion, all in favor? Any opposed, it's a vote, Council of Trust. That was my last motion, but my request, if I may, uh, request of uh, Council of Turkle to stay on top of the ordinance that I've asked uh, from the police department on the the modified mufflers uh, when that comes in uh, for the ordinance. If you, I know I spoke to you, the moment we spoke about this, and it's clear that, uh, that you're well understanding of what I was looking for. Uh, also, ask Council Rosenall to stay on top of the uh, scooter ordinance that I, uh, I made motion of to follow through on this. And again, we spoke about it earlier today. Um, ask Councilor Welton to uh, stay and continue to, uh, to assure the uh, road closure on James Street Park during the baseball games uh, to keep our, our little ones, our kids, uh, spectators and family members safe during that, that time. It's a, a small period of time, but I think a very, you know, we, we had a whole meeting earlier today about safety and what we can do to keep people safe. That's a small, small part that we, we could be able to do. So I ask, I know Count, uh, Council Welton is well aware of, of that situation. So if you can stay on top of that to make sure that that happens uh, in the years to come. I wanna thank all my counselors I, I sit with. Uh, you're all different individuals. Um, you all don't agree with me, which I just don't understand why you couldn't, but. <laughs> Uh, but I do, I do take, uh, I do take every, uh, something from everyone, good and bad, uh, that I, I learn from. So I do appreciate that. Foremost, I want to uh, thank my family uh, to allowing me to spend 14 years as an elected official, six years here as a city councilor, and eight years as a school committee member. And believe it or not, this as a ward councilor going in, I thought it was gonna be easier than the school committee. And some of our members here, we, I'm not really sure if that's, that's the case or not, but I do, uh, I do hold it very close to my heart. I take it very serious, as most of you know. Uh, my integrity and honesty, I try to shine through. And I do care and love this whole city. So um, I, I'm honored for the years that I was elected to it. City Clerk's Office, uh, some who are not here any longer, some who are here and will be uh, here for a long time. Uh, thank you from the bottom of my heart. You made my time and, uh, as a counselor and as a council president uh, much easier. We are extremely, extremely lucky. There's, I don't think the citizens have any idea uh, what the count, uh, City count Clerk's Office does. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you in the past, Mr. Uh, presidents that I've served with uh, was not in easy terms in the last couple of years. You, you, you folks did a trem tremendous job. Thank you to all the department heads who I've always worked very closely with and very respectful. Thank you to all the workers in the city uh, who's followed the directions of those department heads uh, to get the job done. Uh, those are the uh, unsung heroes. Thank you for the custodians here in City Hall to wait until sometimes late in the night to hear us speak and, and thank you to the uh, technical part and PAT uh, to make sure everyone can hear and see us as well. As you notice one thing tonight that happened um, 
<clears throat> the first day I was in council, my daughter was behind me. She's always been behind me, always got my back. Someday you may see her in this seat. Someday you may see me and her in this seat. But one thing we keep, both of us will do is keep what's right for Peabody in, in, in our, our best votes. I've always made, made the best votes I thought. Tonight I spoke quite at length, but I did it for my constituents. I didn't want those constituents to think that my last night here in a city councilor that I was just gonna let it breeze through. I was gonna make them work for their money, and I, I think I did, you know? But I got the answers. I wanna hold them to the, to the feet to the fire. And I know you councilors here for this next year, as that's a, a one-year term, you'll do exactly that to make sure and watch out for the constituents of, throughout the city. I wanna thank all the residents of the city, not just Ward 4, but all the residents, the ones who vote, the ones who don't vote, the ones who can't vote. Thank you. This is a great city. Let's keep it going, keep strong. But I do ask a couple things. Some of the things I've asked already that um, it's easy for the councilors to do, but some may be a little difficult. Check in to look, at least having a conversation going forward. This city's getting very, very complicated like other cities. Look into the charter, okay? Don't keep it buried in our drawer. There's some parts of it that we need to look at. Some parts we don't. We need to keep those buried in the drawer maybe. But one of the things I was gonna look at this, this term was how do we go forward and maybe we wanna look at a, a city manager, somebody who has a professional background in that type of work. We had a, a person who worked here in community development. She is now the city uh, manager of a large city in New Hampshire, doing extremely well, has brought that city up. I think we could do that too at some point in time. Maybe we won't want to do that, but at least look at it, at least have the conversation. Don't be scared, please. Also, as some of the people have talked, push to make sure you, this city council, has their attorney, their own attorney that you can trust on. Not that our city attorneys now is not, we can't trust. He's a great man, and they're all great men. But somebody that works for you, I know it's an additional into the budget, and maybe it wouldn't be that much, but this counselor deserves it. It's too many decisions that you have to have the correct facts. So please push for that, I know you will. Again, thank you to my family, my daughters, my wife, my supporters, the men and women who were with me for many years, uh, my neighbors, I call my village. Thank you, thank you very much. And I guess um, I'm not going away. I'm going to be staying active, okay? People ask me, don't throw those signs away. I didn't. But it may be a different chairs on the, on the ballot, okay? And the only thing I'll, I'll end this with, besides thank you, is let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Thank you. Councilor Chairs, thank you. Uh, Council McGinn. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, move to receive item 7C and refer to finance, so moved. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Council McGinn. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, on suspension of the rules, move to receive item 7D and refer to finance, so moved. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Council McGinn. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, on suspension of the rules, move to receive item 7E. Um, and um, typically we read this as a very long list. Um, unless there's any objection from other counselors, I would suggests in the interest of time that we waive the reading. The council and again, uh, um, yes. just on that motion, and uh, Council Turco has his hand, so I think he just wants to make a comment, or Council Turco, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you, Council McGinn. Um, I, I do support um, all the appointments with the exception of one. So if, I, I don't know how you want to go about doing that. Um, I can list the one and, and approve the others. That I'd be uh, fine with that if you want to hold back one for later consideration, Councilor Turco. 
Thank you. Yes. So if we could hold back on the uh, appointment of Mr. Labossier as Public Services Director. And Council McGinn can continue with the rest. Understood. Just a clarification, is the, um, that motion to not vote on that tonight or this evening, is that what you're recommending, Council Turgo? No, I, I'm recommending that Council McGinn approve all the appointments uh, with the exception of Mr. Labossier, then we can do a roll call on Mr. Labossier. Understood. Okay, thank you. Um, Council McGinn, I apologize, uh, but that was important to clarify. So, um, so the motion on the floor was to uh, move, move to receive 7E with the exception of Mr. Labossier. All in favor? Any opposed? It's a vote. Council McGinn. Right. So uh, the follow-on motion would be to approve um, this, this particular motion will be to approve all the appointments listed on the communication from His Honor the Mayor dated December 3rd, 2021, with the exception of uh, uh, the Director of Public Service, which will be addressed separately. So moved. Yeah, Council Gold. Thank you, Mr. President. I just want to make sure that we are, you're not saying we're not going to vote. Councilor McGinn on Mr. Labossier, you're going to approve the list minus him and then vote on him individually. Is that correct? Mr. President, through you to uh, Councilor Gould. Yeah, Councilor McGinn, please. That, that was the intent. So, I'd, so it's just uh, one motion to get everybody except that one individual and then a separate motion okay. Thank to you. address that. Uh, Sorry, uh, Councilor um, McGinn, apologize to interrupt, but um, Clark Danforth and I were chatting. I thought I had uh, clarified the motion that we were going to move to receive all positions with the exception of uh, Bob Labossier, and we had voted on that. But I just wanted to make sure that we're all, um, <laughs> it's, it sounds simple, but uh, maybe I misunderstood. And Clark Danforth and I were just trying to clarify. Councilor McGinn? Right, so my, that with, you made a motion, or the motion was to receive, and that was voted on. And now there's a separate motion to approve the received item, less that one individual, which will be dealt with in a separate motion. Is that is that clear? Thank you. So, we'll so the sure. second motion okay. that I've made is um, I'd request a roll call vote. Thank you for clarifying. I want to make sure we handle this properly. Um, appreciate it. Uh, on the motion, all in favor? Any opposed? It's a vote. Council can, can I have a roll call on that, Mr. President? Just for clarity, this is a roll call on the whole list, one, less one individual. Good. And on the motion, is there any discussion? Roll call, hearing none, roll call vote, please. Councilor Gould. Yes. Basla. Yes. Welton. Charis. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Mathoulis. Yes. Turco. Yes. Rosigal. Yes. Melville. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. Motion carries 10 to 0. Council McGinn. Thank you, Mr. President. Move to approve the reappointment of Robert Labas, 160 Brady Avenue, Salem, New Hampshire, 03079, to the position of Public Services Director with a term, one year term to expire, December 31st, 2022. So moved. Councilors, you've heard the motion. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Councilors Gould. Yes. Sasla. Yes. Welton. Yes. Charis. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Mathoulis. Yes. Turco. No. Rosignol. Yes. Melville. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. Motion carries nine to one. One F. Council McGinn. Thank you, Mr. President. Under suspension of the rules, move to receive uh, late communication number eight and approve the appointment of Judy S Judith Selesnick, 100 Brooksby Village Drive, PBD Mass 01960, to the position of the Council on Aging with a term to expire, a one year term to expire December 31st, 2022. So moved. 
on the motion. All in favor? Any opposed? It's a vote. Council McGinn. Thank you, Mr. President. And dispense the rules, move to receive item 10A and adopt as advertised. So moved. Council is on the motion. All in favor? Any opposed? It's a vote. Council McGinn. Thank you, Mr. President. And dispense of the rules, move to receive item 10B and adopt as advertised. Uh, Mr. President, on the motion, I'd request a roll call. Council is on the motion. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Councilors Gould. Yes. Fassler. Yes. Welton. Charis. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Matsoulis. Yes. Turco. Yes. Rosignol. Yes. Melville. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. Motion carries 10 to 0. Councilor McGinn. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, and I'd just like to. Uh, you know, to the councils that are that are not returning, I'd like to add my brief comments. Um, thank you all individually for your public service. It's important, and uh, you've all you've all given a great deal to the city, and and it's appreciated. Council Sasslaw, I say so long to my uh, fellow member of the class of '81. It's, uh, spent a lot of years together here through high school and now through the city council. So I wish you well. Council Shress, uh, you've always been really a great advocate for your constituents. Um, I know that they appreciate it, and I certainly do too. I think you're a great model as a as a ward councilor, and uh, we'll miss you. Um, Council Masoulis, uh, what can I say? You've, you're always there with the uh, historical perspective on things, and um, I truly always appreciate that. Um, it's been very helpful to me over the years, and uh, it's been great to get you to know you as a, as a colleague uh, over these past eight years. So I wish you well. Uh, so again, thank, thanks to all three of you for your public service. It's very important. And uh, to you, Mr. President, I'd like to thank you for the fine job you've done this year as Council President, uh, keeping the meetings on purpose and, and efficient. And that's a very much appreciated, and we look forward to you rejoining us here next year on the floor as you pass the gavel to the next, uh, to the next council president. So thank you very much for all your hard work. Thank you, Council again for your kind words. Uh, council Matulis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Believe it or not, I, I'm not prepared to say anything. I don't know. Uh, and that's... I thought I would be, but listen, <clears throat> I want to thank the people of uh, the people of Ward 3 for this ride that I've been on for the past 40, 40 years. Um, I started thinking when I was sitting by myself here, and one of the things that uh, went through me, I don't want to get too nostalgic, but I probably will. Um, it was in this room that was the first time my father ever came to City Hall. You got to understand, I was born in Greece. There were eight kids, eight kids in the family. Uh, my dad was a leather worker. He worked at Crease and Cook in the Beam House. And the poor guy, that's all he did was work, work, work. And he raised nine kids, and he did a great job. They are all good kids, all successful. Unfortunately, uh, four of my brothers passed away too young. But anyways, it was in this room that my father saw me become council president, and it was the, pr the proudest day of my life. Uh, to get elected was a big deal for a kid who was not born in this country. And let me say, without an education also. And to last as long as I did, I, I'd say it was, it was a ride. You know, it was a ride that uh, I don't know what the transportation was. I don't know how I got on that, uh, on that ride. But I do remember how I got involved in politics. 
I was nine years old, and uh, it was a fellow who lived across the street from me. And his father told him, why don't you come, why don't you come and hold a sign with us at the post on Tremont Street? And uh, I didn't even know what he was talking about. But anyways, I went out there and I held the sign with uh, my friend Nick. And the sign happened to be, believe it or not, his name was Michael Murtaugh. That's Fred Murtaugh's brother. He ran for mayor in the 50s. And I held that person's sign. I didn't even know who he was. But you know something? I was hooked when I held that sign. I was, that was probably one of the most thrill, thrilling experiences of my life. Is that how I got into politics? Maybe. I mean, I didn't, none of my brothers got involved in politics. None of them, they all thought I was crazy for, for you know, getting involved myself. But it was something that I enjoyed. You know, and I don't put down anybody who runs for office. As a matter of fact, I congratulate them. I say, yeah, you're pretty gutsy to put your name out there, you know, and let people say what they want about you, you know, because you have no defense. You can't, uh, you know, if someone says something, what are you going to say, you know? But let me tell you, I've lasted as long as I have, and I'm going to brag now, okay? I've lasted as long as I have because I've always done the right thing as an elected official. I've been involved for 40 years. There isn't any bad words to say about me, okay? You know what? If there were, it would have been true, okay? You don't go 40 years without someone saying so. You know, if you did something, it's going to come out. Secrets are not secrets, you know. And that is what I'm proud of, that I did the right thing. I lasted as long as I can. And I can walk out of this room today with my head held high because my father was in this room with me to see me become, me become council president. And that's how I'm going to leave it. Thank you. And uh, I love every one of you. Trust me when I tell you that. You know, I don't hold grudges. I try to be a gentleman to everybody. You know? And uh, it was a great honor serving with you guys. Ladies, I love you. Thank you. Okay. Council President, you did a great job. Guys, it was an honor. Thank you. Thank you, Council Matsoulis. Council Turco. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'm going to move to receive item late four with an explanation. It's a petition from um, the residents at one Excuse me, Council President. <coughs> Council Sassler. I object to the receiving of late communication four. Thank you, Mr. Uh, President. Uh, move to uh, receive item 8B and approve. Councilors on the motion. All in favor, any opposed? It's a vote. Councilor Turco. Move to receive item 8C and approve. Council Turk, uh, clarification, uh, that's just uh, um, uh, information, so I think we just move to receive, if that's uh, agreeable. Okay, I receive it, and I approve of their change of address. To <laughs> uh, on the motion, all in favor, any opposed, it's, it's a vote. <laughs> Mr. President, move to receive and approve item 9A, all papers being in order. Councils on the motion, all in favor, any opposed? It's a vote, Councilor Turco. I will leave the lengthy ones for my, uh, the two uh, councils coming up after me. If, uh, hopefully they have bottles of water. Um, with that said, I, I just want to say, um, 
I've seen councilors uh, leave since since I've been on here. I've seen new ones come on. Um, it's it's always um, thought that you know the seats don't belong to us. That uh, you know we have them for two years. We do the best that we can during that two years, and then the people decide whether they're going to give those seats back to us. Um, but I will say, the three that are leaving tonight, um, the terms that you did, you, you deserve them. Um, Joel, you were one of the uh, first councilors that I, I met on the council and, and befriended and uh, taught me a lot about West Peabody when I, I didn't know really anything about West Peabody, being a South Peabody kid, um, actually a Revere kid, uh, transplanted to South Peabody. So it was good to, to learn that. And, um, you know, with your two years on the council at the time that I got on, it, it was good to have somebody uh, with a little experience to help me out. So I thank you for that. Council Charest, we came on together. Uh, I think that between the two of us, uh, if 11 people changed their mind, we both would have lost uh, back in 2015. Uh, actually, it was, uh, it was 13. I won by nine, you won by four. So 13 votes decided both of our elections. And, um, you know, um, the thing that I always found with you is that um, I, I felt like an inner competitiveness with you because I saw, you know, how active you were right from the get-go as a ward councillor and how active you were with constituents and I said, uh, you know, that's the guy that, uh, you know, if, if he's going to be that active uh, and we've got elected together, I, I have to do the same exact things that he does. And I saw, you know, you constantly meeting with residents and your response, uh, you know, time was, was impeccable. And I said, uh, that's, that's the role I'm going to follow. So for that, you know, I, I say thank you and, and Sam, you know, um, to be friends with your family and your father and, and um, see the way that you two are. It, it, I think that it puts me and Belle, Isabella a little bit closer um, in hopes that we'll have this type of relationship that you two have um, later on. So thank you. And Councilor Matsoulis, um, one of the things that I find to be so important as somebody that wasn't born here is history. In, um, you know, I, I've, every time you spoke, um, and I mean this, I, I, I listened intently um, when I heard the stories of the 1970s and the 80s and the 90s, um, whereas, you know, some people might have got a, a chuckle out of, of the throwback stories. I, I was amazed at them because, um, you know, it's important. It's important for us to know how we got here today and, and um, the people that brought us to where we are and why the zoning is as it is and why the street names are what they are and and the fights that have been fought and um, you know to continue it's a reminder to continue to fight them so to that uh, council Matsoulis thank you very much and the last thing I'll say is that um, the three of you the, the one common denominator is you all have amazing families um, so I think it's a, it's a testament to who you are as men and the families that you've brought into this city and raised here, and, and um, it was a pleasure to serve with the three of you, so thank you. Thank you, Council Turco. Council Rogsonow. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, under suspension of the rules, move to receive late communication number seven, um, A, class two motor vehicle license, 2022 renewal, all papers being in order, uh, B, entertainment license, 2022 renewal, and C, general license, 2022 renewal. All papers being in order, so moved. Council's on the motion, all in favor, any opposed? It's a vote, Council Rosenau. Thank you, Mr. President. Under suspension of the rules, move to receive and approve all papers being in order, 9C, class one motor vehicle license, 2022 renewals of Acura Peabody, Audi or Peabody, BMW or Peabody, BMW or Peabody, flagship motor uh, commercial vans, 202 Newbury Street, Jaguar Land Rover, Peabody 247 Newbury Street, and Mini of Peabody, 2009 Andover Street. So moved. Council's on the motion. All in favor? Any opposed? It's a vote. Council Rosignol. Thank you, Mr. President. Under suspension of the rules, move to receive and approve. All papers being in order, 9D, Class 2 Motor Vehicle Licenses, 2022 renewals of AC Auto Sales, Alex Auto Sales, Auto Graphics, Auto Factory, Auto Factory 288 Newbury Street, Auto Mall Collections, Auto Express, 
Bell's Auto Sale, Brake Light Motor, CNC Auto, Desi Used Cars, DNR Auto Sales, Elite Pre-Owned Auto, Four Star Service, Michael Mo Michael's Motors, Michael's Auto Sales, North Shore Automotive, North Shore Auto Sales, Oasis Auto and Truck Center, PK Motor Sales, Prestige Motors of Peabody, R&A Automotive, Sacco, Sparrows, Summit Auto Sales, Tremont Auto Sales, 222 Newbury Motors, USA Speedy Auto and Tire Center, Walnut Street, Wilson Square Auto Sales, all papers being in order, so moved. Council's on the motion, all in favor, any opposed? It's a vote, Council Rosenow. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, under suspension of the rules, we'll receive item 9E, Class 3 Motor Vehicle License Renewal for 2022, all papers being in order. So moved. Just for a uh, quick Dan Force, just checking, we did um, Grarisi's brothers, but yeah. we're doing Peterson's Automotive. Just so Peterson Automotive, 114. Understood. Council is on the motion. All in favor? Any opposed? It's a vote. Council Rosano. Thank you, Mr. President. Lastly, I would just like to echo my my fellow councillors in saying it's been an absolute honor to serve with all three of you gentlemen that oh, this is your last meeting. Councillor Sassler, uh, your passion and your commitment to your residents um, has been outstanding. You know, I, I, I know you personally, you're a good man and I agree with, with everything you said as far as we may not all agree or, and we may agree to disagree, but I, I honestly think that we all have the city's best interests at heart, and I think you do, and I think you're a great person, and, and I respect every decision you've made as a councilor because I know it's coming from a good place and a place of caring. Councilor Charest, we served on the school committee together, and we've served uh, for the past four years that I've been on the council. Um, you're a great person. You wear your heart on your sleeve. You will do anything for anybody if somebody just asks you. And uh, I respect you immensely. Lastly, Councilor Mitsoulis, your institutional knowledge, your history, um, your passion, and um, your candor is second to none. And I really have enjoyed spending the last four years on the council with you, and I appreciate you very much. With that said, happy holidays, happy new year, and thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor Rosenthal. Councilor Melville. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, under suspension of the rules, move to receive uh, renewals for 2022 entertainment items, all items under uh, item F, so moved. Council's on the motion. All in favor? Any opposed? It's a vote. Councilor Melville. Thank you, Mr. President. Under suspension of the moves, moves to receive uh, general license renewals for 2022, all papers being in order of item G, so moved. Council's on the motion, all in favor, any opposed, it's a vote, Council Mello. Thank you, Mr. President, just to of the rules, move to receive uh, renewals for 2022, all papers being in order for lodging, house license, WJ scores, trust, so moved. Council's on the motion, all in favor, any opposed, it's a vote, Council Mello. All right. Um, thank you very much. And to uh, three councilors, uh, a lot's been said. It's not your wake, so we're going to see you guys around. Uh, <laughs> I, I, you all worked really hard. Uh, <laughs> um, on, but on a, on, a, on a lighter note, like, uh, you know, all three of you were great. I always try to be a good colleague, and you were all very good colleagues to myself. Um, uh, I learned a lot from each and every one of you. It was, uh, I try to keep an open mind, um, and you know, each of you have convinced me of, on an item that I wasn't sure about, you actually swayed me. So um, you were, I don't think people understand how difficult it is to be a ward counselor. They have no idea the stuff you deal with, um, the variety of issues, um, and so I have n nothing but the utmost respect for the job you do. Um, your families were nothing but kind to myself and my wife when I became a counselor. Um, and it's, uh, it's a tribute to yourself and to the city for the service that you provided. Uh, I look forward to seeing you out there. Each one of you is still going to be very active in the community. Joel, I watch the games that you announced, and I'll see you at all the events, the downtown events and, and everywhere, and Demo, I'll see you at the Post. So uh, with that being said, uh, Council President, thank you for your, this job. 
uh, the job this year. Uh, it's extremely challenging in the, with the remote work, uh, remote hearings, and all the other technical issues you deal with. You did a great job. And, um, you know, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Holidays to everybody out there. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member, especially for your kind words. And uh, I know it's getting late, and I certainly, this is, as we all know, it's my last night with the gavel. So a couple brief moments, uh, brief brief comments. Uh, I, I definitely, like many of us, I want to thank Count, uh, City Clerk uh, Danforth uh, and her entire staff for the work they've done over the last 12 months. Uh, I've been able to work very closely with uh, Allison and her team and in my role as Council President, and uh, they just made this job uh, much easier. I haven't made it look easy, but they made it easier for me. Uh, we're fortunate to have this team, not only just to help the, the, uh, our residents, but support this um, city council in its um, in its work. And uh, uh, once again, I will thank all of you for being supportive and patient with me in my role as as council president. It do, it did mean a lot. I've enjoyed doing it, and you all have worked with me as we uh, work on our efforts uh, for the uh, residents of Peabody. Uh, I did want to take a moment and thank outgoing school committee member Andrew Arnotis for his work on behalf of the city's education system for the last four years. I appreciate his time and thank him for his service. And certainly last, I do want to add my voice uh, to echo the thanks for Councilor Charest, Mutsoulis and Sasloff for their work on behalf of their own wards and our city over their respective terms. Thank you all. Uh, at this time, I now will entertain a motion to adjourn. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. We are now adjourned. Hey, kids, kids, I screwed up.